what's going on everybody it's eta prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new nvidia jetson orin developer kit and with this they offer a few different models you can pick up the orin nano with four gigs of ram the orin nano with eight gigs of ram or the developer kit that's what we happen to have here this is basically the eight gig model also comes with a baseboard and a power supply and on the channel, we've taken a look at basically all of the nano units that NVIDIA has released, but this is coming in as the most powerful. I mean, it's the brand new model and it offers 40 tops of AI performance. Some of you may have heard the metric tops before when it comes to AI. This stands for trillion operations per second. So this will do 40 trillion operations per second when it comes to AI tasks. So needless to say, this little board is putting out some really amazing performance for the form factor, and it really comes down to the GPU they opted to use. This is the same architecture, Ampere, that's used in the 30 series NVIDIA GPUs for desktops, and with this, we have 1,024 GPU cores and 32 Tensor cores, so RTX on? Now, one thing I'd like to mention here is uh, they do offer a four gigabyte model of this, which offers 20 tops of AI performance, and it's got a 512 core Ampere GPU with 16 tensor cores, but we're working with the eight gigabyte model here, which does offer a significant jump in performance. And I'm super excited to show you what this little board can do. Now, some of you may be familiar with the NVIDIA Nano line, and you know that all of the magic happens in the module itself. So we can actually detach the module, this is where our CPU and GPU is housed, and we're definitely going to need that cooling fan. I mean, it comes pre-installed, and this thing can get quite hot. It'll run at 7 watts or 15, but the carrier board is really important also because we've got all of our I.O. here. And speaking of that, one thing that I personally think they should have added here was HDMI. Instead, we've only got that display port. Now, it's totally fine for a lot of people. You can always use an adapter, but it would have been nice to see, you know, a full-size HDMI port on this unit. Along with the display port, we also have USB Type-C, Gigabit Ethernet, and four USB 3.2 ports right here. Over here, we have two MIPI CSI camera connectors. This is 8x2, 40 GPIO pins, and this is the same layout as the Raspberry Pi. That's kind of become the standard for a lot of people who add GPIO to their boards. And finally, moving around to the bottom, this does come pre-installed with a Wi-Fi 6 card. We've also got two extra M.2 slots. Now, these are key M. We've got a 2242 slot and a 2280 slot, which we'd add an NVMe SSD to. But for this video, we're actually just going to be running the operating system from a micro SD card. And I'll give you a little explanation in a bit, but I want to move on to the main specs of this unit. So for the CPU, we've got a six core ARM Cortex A78 running at 1.5 gigahertz. The GPU is that 1024 core NVIDIA Ampereer GPU running at 625 megahertz. We've also got 32 tensor cores here, 8 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM, and when it comes to the operating system, we're going to be using Jetpack 5.1.1. This is actually based on Ubuntu with the GNOME desktop. It's Jetson Linux 35.3.0 will be updated in the future. It supports Tensor RT 8.5, DeepStream, and Isaiah SDK, plus a lot more. I mean, the community is pretty crazy with this. And like I mentioned, in this video, I'm going to be running from a micro SD card. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so here we are. Now, uh, one downside to what I've got set up right now is that this is actually running from a micro SD card. To tell you the truth, I didn't feel like taking the time to kind of transfer everything over to the M.2 SSD, but it's totally possible. Unfortunately, you can't just flash the M.2 up front. There is some configuration you need to do from the micro SD with the M.2 installed. In my next video, I will give you a quick explanation on how to do it, but I was really excited about getting this up and running. So mainly with running from that micro SD card, uh, load times are going to be a bit longer than an M.2. And in some cases, I mean, it can definitely be a lot longer, especially loading up some of the NVIDIA AI demos that we're going to take a look at here. I've got two specifically that I want to look at. They were pre-installed with Jetpack, so uh, I figured we'd go ahead and look at those. But I have also installed a bunch of other stuff that we're going to be testing, especially emulation. Now, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know, I've tested out a lot of these NVIDIA Nano boards. This one takes the cake. Obviously, it's the newest one. So we do have a much more powerful GPU here. And uh, we've got a couple power profiles that we can use. These are the two power profiles that are set from NVIDIA. So if we go up here to power mode, 7 watt, definitely going to save on energy cost. But, uh, you know, if you want the max performance, this runs at up to 15 watts. And that fan... You will not hear it, but it definitely needs that fan at 15 watts when you're stressing out the CPU and GPU. 
As you can see from Neo Fetch, we're running Ubuntu 20.04, and there is a way to upgrade this. Um, I'm going to stick with what we have right now. Like I mentioned, I will make a couple more videos on this. 5.10 kernel, we're at 1080 right now with the monitor and uh, game capture that I have. GNOME Desktop. And this is the 8 gigabyte model of the Orin. They also make a 4 gig, at least for the nanos. Now, when you move up to the real Orin or the AGX Orin, that unit costs significantly more and it does have 32 gigabytes of RAM. But with this, we've got 8 gigabytes of LP DDR5 instead of DDR4, which does make a difference. First things first here, you know, as soon as you install Jetpack or the operating system that we have here, there is a lot pre installed. And with the power this new NVIDIA chip is putting out, I mean, it's a very smooth experience, even running from a micro SD card. And I'm not using a super fast SD right now, but overall, everything's been really smooth. And I have installed the software center here so I can easily just grab some applications to test out. And I have installed the Dolphin emulator. Now, if you do get it from the uh, software center here, it's going to be the old 5.0 version. I'm using the development version, which has a lot of fixes. It's been a while since they put out an official stable release. Most of the time when I do my testing, I use the development version. So that's what we've got here. And I've also got Ether SX2 installed for some PS2 emulation. We'll be testing that out. And it kind of blew me away at how well it runs both of those emulators. But the first thing I want to do is take a look at a couple of the AI demos they have built in with Jetpack 5.1.1. The first one here is the synthetic data modeling demo that they have pre-installed. And this uses the Omniverse Replicator. That's what they're calling it. And basically, this is going to create synthetic data from camera feed. So this is great for having a robot detect people and things like that. And as you can see, it's kind of really low to the ground there with the demo they have. From a micro SD card to load this demo up, it did take quite a while, but the next one here is the PeopleNet demo. It's the Detection Transformer, or DETR, and this runs at about 7 to 8 frames per second on the Nano. If we were to talk about the bigger Orin, which I mentioned cost a lot more, that runs at 30 FPS. That's real time. This one isn't quite real time, given that we're only at around 7 to 8. But given the price difference between the two, this isn't bad performance at all. Of course, the Aura Nano isn't sold as kind of a media playback device or even an emulation or gaming device, but that doesn't mean we can't get some out of the way on it. First thing I wanted to take a look at here was some 4K video playback from YouTube, and I'm using the Chromium browser. This is 4K60, running really smooth, but uh, you can see we do have a few drop frames here and there. I am on Wi-Fi right now, and Ethernet might help out if I let it buffer a little bit from the beginning, but it does do 4K video playback, as you can see here. And given that this is running at 4K 60fps with HDR enabled is pretty awesome. So the last thing I want to take a look at for this video is some emulation. And like I mentioned, I did get EtherSX2 installed. Really easy. It's actually just an app image. So you'll just set it up to run it as an app. You can double click. Should pop right up. I didn't have to do any kind of custom configuration or anything like that. From the graphics settings, we do have access to OpenGL and Vulkan. We've got some really good Vulkan drivers here with uh, Jetpack 5.1. This can run Gran Turismo 4 at 3.5x resolution. We can even run God of War 2 at 3x resolution on this little board. We'll start out here with uh, Gran Turismo 4 because it is an easier one to emulate. We're at 3.5x. I have all of the performance metrics listed up in the top right hand corner and I'm using an Xbox controller connected over USB. I could connect it over Bluetooth, but I just went ahead and plugged it right in. As you can see by the resolution, we're at 3.5x the resolution of the original PlayStation 2 and this is running at a constant 60fps. So on something like the Snapdragon Gen 1, I can go up to around 2.5x with this game in Android and I really do wish we had an Android version for the Orin. Maybe down the road we'll get something like that. But Gran Turismo 4 is a bit easier to emulate than God of War 2. And unfortunately with this one, I did have to back that resolution down to 3x instead of 3.5. It still looks great. And I mean, we're running at 60 FPS, even with a lot of particles on screen. When I do kind of the electric move here, you'll see it doesn't even dip under 60. We're getting a constant frame rate out of this. And that GPU is really working to keep this upscale. So yeah, I mean, great PS2 emulation, and when it comes to GameCube and Wii, we're also getting some very similar performance. And first up, we've got a Wii game to test here, Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, 1080p using the Vulcan back in. Really great performance here, very impressed, got a few dips here and there when uh, new shaders are loading in, but overall, we are running at full speed. I've got the FPS up in the top right hand corner. 
Now this isn't a super hard game to emulate, so I wanted to move over to one that does struggle on lower end systems. And oddly enough, it's not even a Wii game, it's a GameCube game, F-Zero GX. Now if you've ever tried to emulate this on lower end hardware, you know how hard it can be. But right now, we're still at 1080p, Vulcan back in, on the hardest track to emulate, Fire Field. As you can see, there's a lot going on in the background. FPS, again, is up in the top right hand corner, and it's running this at a constant 60 FPS on this hardware. I also tried OpenGL, and I was getting similar performance, had a few more dips here and there. It seems that Vulkan will work out a little better with uh, this emulator. In certain games, you might have to swap between Vulkan and OpenGL, but either way, we're definitely getting some amazing performance here from the Jetson Aura Nano. So far, given the time that I've spent with the Orin, it's been able to do everything that I've thrown at it. And I do plan on making a couple more videos. I would like to update this uh, Linux kernel. We were able to do that with the original Nano without much fuss, but uh, I kind of want to just see what'll happen. Who knows? I mean, it might not be supported yet, but either way, I mean, with this operating system here, there's still a lot more that I'd like to test. I would love to test out some PC games using something like Box86 or something similar like Wine on Arm. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've got a lot more setup that I need to do here. First impressions, this thing is definitely a powerhouse. It's not coming in cheap and it's not for everybody. Obviously, this is made as a developer kit, but it doesn't mean we can't have some fun with it. So that's going to wrap it up for my first look video. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on the Orange, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning a little more, I'll leave some links in the description. You can head over to NVIDIA's developer website just to see what this thing's all about. And you could also check out the AGX just to get a look at it because that thing is an absolute monster. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.